I describe myself as a guy who likes to go fishing. Oh, you could do this. Come on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm a guy who likes nature. I like to go look at birds, and I like to go fishing, and I like to be on, in the coast, and I like to be in the forest. You got yours. He's an avid fisherman. He, he interacts with fishermen. He wants to make sure that we are protecting um, our resources so that they'll be around for the future. I always say it was part of his DNA. He was born with all that love. My husband imparted all of that because he was a nature lover. He gave that to Carl. It was always about nature. Born in Brooklyn, Carl Safina's love of the outdoors inspired an unexpected pathway to conservation. With a PhD in ecology, Safina spent the first part of his career fighting illegal waterway dumping and unsustainable fishing practices, leading to a landmark ban on high seas drift nets and a rewrite of the U.S. federal fisheries law. In 1990, he founded the Living Oceans Program for the National Audubon Society, became a MacArthur Fellow, and one of the 100 notable conservationists of the 20th century. But it's his way with words where Safina made his mark, authoring seven books to date on the issues that threaten the natural world. In my writing, I'm not trying to give people science lessons. What I try to do is I try to make sure that the reader is really right there with me and feeling it along with me. That's what you want. You want people who personify and, and, and in, translate facts into emotive experiences. And I think that's something that Carl does better than almost anybody I know. They swim fast, they swim hard, but only about one in a thousand is going to actually survive. One in a thousand? Yeah. Wow, I hope you didn't hear that. Just do your best, okay? He sings the sea. I think it's because he deeply loves nature and loves the ocean. Carl expresses that love extremely genuinely. I mean, the only way to accurately try to get this across in words is to try to combine the factual science of it and what's happening with the sheer poetry of the, of the actual beauty of it. If I had to pick one person on this planet to represent me in the human court of public opinion, I think I would choose Carl Safina, because I think he's that good of a communicator and a storyteller. What I don't want to do today is I don't want to do a presentation. I want to take the opportunity to have a conversation. The Safina Center was founded in 2003, giving Safina a platform to inspire critical conservation values around the world. He has worked to apply international agreements to help restore depleted populations of tuna, swordfish, and sharks. Safina's 2010 book on the Deepwater Horizon oil blowout in the Gulf of Mexico continues to influence environmental advocates for the oversight of ocean-based oil wells. Carl's work has been invaluable in sort of building um, current ocean conditions into long-term historical context. And once people have a grasp on just how little is left, it gives us some passion to be able to at least retain what we have. He, in every pore and every um, neuron, is constantly focused on the wonders of the natural world and what he can do to help sustain them for future generations. Yeah, he's a simple guy. A lot of it has to do with humility. He doesn't push you. He puts you in a position to push yourself. He's a, he's a good teacher. I am just stunned where his life has taken him, what he's achieved. I wish that my husband could be alive today to see the accomplishments where Carl has gone with everything that he loved to do in his life. He'd be bursting 